Hey everybody, looks like we are live. How are you today? And we are uh, doing a part one, which is always a lot of fun, which rhymes. So part one is always very interesting. How do we begin that painting, right? What are the first steps? How do we develop it? Uh, this is definitely going to be something that that I feel is very, very informative and you're going to love it. So I'm happy to go ahead and uh, start this right now. We are painting the beautiful, the talented, the lovely Paula Ray, as you can see up here. Uh, in my live streams is where you're going to learn a lot of really interesting things, such as I move this aside, you can see we're going to go over anatomy. Anatomy of the nose, anatomy of the skull. We're going to go over the anatomy of, of the fat compartments, all these different things. Hey Mike DeLoach, how are you all the way from the Atlanta area? Hey honey, how are you all the way from, from uh, Long Island? And then we have Paul all the way from Indiana. Go Irish, right? Uh, so that's cool. Not too far from Fort Bend, which is nice. So... Here we are, we have some of our, our uh, custom sh shields here that are gonna help us out, and we're gonna go over that as well. Let me turn over this uh, overhead light here. And so, this is exciting. And let's see, we are going to pretty much start just by painting the face. So we're going to get the face only. Now these are custom shields, they're not stencils. I'm not spraying through it to, to get something I don't already have. They match my drawing, which I did by hand. And so, so they, I call them custom shields, they're not stencils. So, so I just wanted to share that. And you can see how they fit in my drawing. It's not like I don't have a drawing and I'm just putting this here and it's going to you know help my drawing no this is reinforcing the drawing colette how are you all the way from wisconsin thank you so much for hanging out i really appreciate you you're amazing thank you so much and let's let's go ahead and put this on paula right here where is she gotta make sure this matches am i right that's important Okay, so it matches pretty good. And wait, maybe just a little bit off to the side like that. We don't want to lose the contour. That would really, really stink. So we don't want it to stink. We don't want it to, we don't want to take away from the hard work I did earlier, right? So we're just going to line this up as so. And put this here, here. Just put our magnets. This is a metal, a metal plate that I have. Honey, thank you so much for this super chat. I really appreciate that. That helps the group so much. It helps me continue. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And uh, that is really nice and generous. So I appreciate that so much. Uh, so very much, honey. You just don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy, how are you? All the way from Jersey, how's it going? So I have my, my Vega, and I usually use my Vega, my Vega 1000. Uh, what I did is I took the Vega 1000 and I kind of changed the needle, the head assembly and the needle to the, Ve to the uh, Omni 4000, you can do that. And then you get a little more detail. So I like doing that a lot. And so, but I already worked in the uh, light mixture today with that. So I don't think it's a good idea to go in. But I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, clean this really quick. I have a, I have a uh, Q-tip, so. Remember, airbrush maintenance is one of the most important things. And I don't mean maintenance like after something happened, right? I mean maintenance like, you know, uh, keeping it clean, right? Cleaning it in a timely fashion because 
if you don't take care of your airbrush, it's it's going to leave you. It's just going to start doing weird things. And you just want to baby your airbrush, and your airbrush will baby you. And that's the real truth. So I'm just going to go ahead and just clean this airbrush real quick. What I like to do is just regular old water and a Q-tip. Get a Q-tip that doesn't have a lot of, it's not hairy. So like the CBS Q-tips, the store brand Q-tips are really, really good. And they're really expensive. I find a lot of times the, the cheaper, less expensive stuff is usually the best. It's really funny how that works. And just going to give that a good cleaning. And now that that is clean, I'm gonna put my needle back in. And we're gonna find an airbrush that is going to work perfectly for us. So I still don't want to go in with the white because I'm gonna even give it a deeper cleaning later, but definitely don't want it to get to the point where uh, it causes uh, a little tiny bit of, of ink could make my white mixture gray. And we have no, there's no place for the gray mixture, <laughs> you know? So let me look for my uh, Omni 4000. Everyone loves the Omni 4000. Well, I do. Let's see, where is it? Oh, okay, here it is. And I'm just gonna find myself a quick connect for it. Okay, so. Here we go, we have my Quick Connect for the Omni 4000, which is amazing. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And I have a Mac valve on that because the there's no pack valve on the Omni 4000. So let me get a top for it. Take the top off of this one. Oh, don't need a top, huh? Okay, because that's a bigger cup. All right, so we're gonna take, uh, you know, our favorite white mixture right here, and the white mixture you get free with your if you go ahead and purchase my course, and the course is in the description. So you get a set of the white mixture uh, in the course, which is really amazing, and you get a, a set of the the India inks. And uh, I'm really proud of that course. I worked hard on it, very hard and diligently to make a course that is going to make, make the student learn so much. I wish there was a course like mine when I started. And that's basically the thinking, the thought process that I had going into it. So now I have this uh, white mixture here and I'm just going to just go ahead and test this out. Make sure, maybe lower the air pressure a little bit. When you have a very thin dilution, remember that you want to, you definitely want to with a thin dilution, you want to have lower air pressure because it's going to have more tendency to spider and do all kinds of weird things. So that's very, very important. Okay, so I have my picture of Paola here. Paola Ray is, uh, I think she's Venezolano, Venezuelan, and she's just amazing. She's been doing telenovelas since like the, the late 19, uh, 1990s, no, the late 1990s, early 2000s. And she's just a fantastic actress. Um, really great. I don't know if she did mainstream like in the United States. I know she is uh, really big in Latin America, but just an amazing, an amazing beauty and just a very talented actress. And I said, hey, why not? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten some of these pencil lines. I don't need them so dark. And we're just going to. So what I like to do is take my needed eraser 
and make sure it's clean and then just kind of roll over it, right? Hey, Dwayne, thank you so much, my friend, for the super chat. That means so much to me. I really appreciate that. It helps the, the, the channel so much and, you know, moves things forward. And I'm very, very excited. Uh, you and Honey doing the super chats, it, it really encourages me more than you know, Dwayne. So thank you so much, sir. And uh, I'm, I'm excited and it really really gives me a, a boost of energy. So thank you so much and I'm doing something right, you know? Um, oh, thank you, Dwayne. So Dwayne, your package should arrive any day now with a, with a really cool gift in there. So I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited to hear what you think when you get it. Dwayne has been waiting very patiently for the sepia mixtures so I really appreciated his patience and so uh, a little something special. Teresa, how you doing? I definitely do commissions, most definitely, especially now during the holidays. So Teresa, I'm gonna type in the, uh, in the, in the comments here, my email address, okay? So painted glyphs at gmail.com you have any questions whether there's no pressure sales here you know and uh, so that's cool so you have any questions it could be for now it could be for later you know and we could work on some ideas on on what you want so definitely I done so many portraits in my career you know so right now, I'm, as you can see, I'm just lightening those pencil lines, really super light. Let me see if I can lighten that. And very cool. What a great group we have so far today. Very exciting. It's not the quantity, it's the quality always, especially when it comes to people. A lot of channels get so many different views and everything, and I'm not worried because I know that you know, the people who are here are like, you know, that's who this channel is for. So I'm always happy for that. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're not going to paint highlights. That's not what the white mixture is. Think of it as this is, this is a rock, right? Like a, like a slate. And we're just going to use the white to kind of push forward uh, the lights and push back the shadows. And the paper is gonna become the shadows. And so that's how we're doing that. So by doing this initial, this initial step, it's very important because it kind of sets the tone for the, for the whole painting. And we're still worried about anatomy. I'm gonna go deeper in anatomy, but you can still see right here, there's the orbital ridge here. So I do see that, and I see it right here as well. I'm gonna keep that in mind. Such as over here, I'm seeing things like the retro obicularis oculi fat here, and here, those are the landmarks on the face. So those are things that even in the very beginning, it's really about the anatomy and uh, knowing the anatomy because, you know, that's what makes up people, you know. So here goes. I'm about four inches away. And I'm going to go so light. And I'm, I tested it before. So I know it's coming out. I'm just going to go so light. And I'm just going to pull back just very, very lightly, and I'm gonna hit and move. Now, it's important that you hit and move. If you don't hit and move and you stay in that one spot, you're gonna get a buildup of white, and that's not what you want. you want. You want a transparent white. Now, I've worked in oils and pastels and, you know, studied in those mediums from amazing artists, famous artists that are in the Smithsonian Institution Metropolitan Museum of Art. I mean, big, big painters. And 
you know, and I studied with all the, all the different mediums out there. And the one thing that you always want to, to make sure is that when you do your initial, your initial layers that it sets the tone, right? Like a football game. A football team will come out first quarter, set the tone, either with the running game or with a great defense. So if you set the tone correctly, you, you're really in great shape, right? You're really in great shape for the rest of the painting. But let's take a look at, hey Brad, how are you my friend? Good to see you all the way from Manitoba. So this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to come over here and we're gonna look at her skull. The skull is something you really want to pay attention to. I mean, from the very beginning, that the skull, but also the forehead. The forehead is something that is neglected, but there's a lot of anatomy in that forehead. And you'll see, you'll have these superorbital eminences over here, and you can see them even in this beautiful woman. And she's, you know, very gradual, nothing very harsh, but you still see those superorbital eminences here. <laughs> and you hear the dog <laughs> and also you and her name is Luna <laughs> uh, that's the neighbor's dog and but here you can see the frontal bone and there's kind of two of these kind of uh, protuberances here and you see that in her as well which is really good Mr. Tone all the way from Florida how are you sir Jacksonville to be precise and so you see how by paying attention to this, it's gonna help us to, even in this very beginning stage, take it to that next level. Okay, and now we're gonna come over here. I got my kettle going, so I'm gonna have some tea in a little bit. And over here, oh, you know what it is? I, I was wondering why I'm getting like this really great detail. You ever forget to put on your, your compressor and it gets lower and lower and you're like, man, I'm getting good detail. I will just have hardly any air in the compressor. There we go. That was funny. And is the sound intermittent? Let me see. Is anyone else having any issues with the sound, guys? Let me know. I'm going to turn on the fan here. So guys out there, give me a sound check. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Uh, what do you think? Are you hearing anything popping or anything? Mr. Uh, Tone is saying there's a popping sound. Is that true? Are you getting that? Okay, what about right now? Everything okay? Because if I don't move, maybe I'm moving. That could be it. Okay. Okay, so I'm not moving now, and everything seems to be a okay. Is that correct? Now I'm going to. So as you can see here, I worked on the frontal bone, right? Okay, so it's definitely the moving, so that's good. So I will not move. <laughs> there will be no moving. We're gonna do the alar cartilage right here on her nose. And then that moves into the lateral cartilage coming up here. And then, of course, we have the nasal bones coming up here. So there's actually three sets of bones going up, and that's important to... Uh... <laughs> Wait, it was in his head. I'm glad. I'm glad it's not, sir. That's good. Raul says there is a very slight cracking, but it's okay. Okay, are you still getting the cracking in this last sentence? Let me know, guys.
Okay, good. Hey, Dennis, how you doing? Okay, so not sure what exactly is occurring here. I think I may know because I believe the wire is probably touching something. So let me see if I can...